Do you have a hand drill, but you really want a drill press? Well, I've designed an add-on that will let you drill perfectly straight holes and let you set a depth stop too. It's 3D printed, free and completely open source. I wanted a product, but it didn't exist, so I designed and created it myself. That's the beauty of being a maker. Another thing that I made was this moustache. It's for Movember, and thank you to everyone who's donated so far. This took a few attempts to dial in, so let's go. Not too long ago, I designed and created this special box for storing astronomy equipment. It's got internal linkages to open and shut the doors and lid together. Since then, I've also printed some eyepiece holders. The panels are laser cut plywood and for the screws to sit flush I needed to do some countersinking. And this is a job that I did with my pedestal drill. It guarantees that the holes will be perfectly square and it has a built in depth stop so I can set the countersinking to be exactly the same for all of the parts. This drill press and many other power tools reside in my underhouse workshop which I don't use as often as I should. And that's because the only way to get to the workshop is to walk past the backyard and go past these guys. And they don't sleep, no, they wait, until they can be divas and bleat for attention. <laughs> and if I go into the workshop without them, they bleat louder than the power tools. Personally, I'm really not very good at holding the drill exactly square with what I'm drilling, so a drill press works well for me. But that doesn't mean you can use them everywhere, like a job on a roof or wall, or a job on an object too big to take to the drill press. So how about we take the drill press to the drill? My idea was to have a clamp that grabs onto the clutch as this is round and doesn't rotate when you pull the trigger. We could then have a foot to touch the workpiece and then some rods connecting the two. This should keep the drill bit square and ensure that the drill can only move in a straight line back and forth from the target. And if we add an adjustable stopper to one of the guides, this should limit the travel of the drill, meaning we can do multiple partial holes or countersinking to the exact same depth. This seemed like a no-brainer, but I couldn't find anything like it on hardware stores or on places like printables. Instead, the common solution, where you attach a collar to each individual drill bit, and that hits the workpiece while spinning. Not exactly what I was after. It seemed clear that the only thing left to do was to just make it myself. My initial aim for this was to do it with no specialised hardware. We're just talking really long bolts, preferably with a hex head, but I would make sure the design could counter for other type of bolt heads as well. I wanted the only other components to be some generic springs that would slide over the bolts and help return the foot to its original position. To make my design as universal as possible, I would target the clutch mechanism on the outside of the drill. Pretty much every drill has this and it doesn't turn when the drill turns. There's no doubt variation here between different brands and types of drill. The overall size and shape should still be pretty similar, so if I made this part modular, my tool should adapt to different brands and drills easily. In terms of clamping to the drill, I was originally considering some type of iris mechanism, but I figured this would end up being far too complex and probably not strong enough. Then I found this adjustable pipe clamp by the 3 designer, and while I didn't use any of the CAD, it was definitely a big inspiration. I printed one to get a feel for how it worked, and my brief testing told me this should be a pretty good mechanism to base my design upon. So here's where I ended up with version 1. I started by measuring and modeling the clutch part of the drill, and then created these identical jaws to be printed in TPU. I figured the exact angle and size of these could be changed to suit different drills. We then have two halves that these dovetail into, and then floating inside there, we have a nut trap and a knob trap, and they're both as deadly as they sound, where a bolt could come through the middle and pull the two halves together. I printed and assembled all of the pieces, pretty eager to see if it would clamp the drill effectively. And the answer to that was yes, it could get the job done, but it needed to be really tight, and that's because the clutch is tapered, so it naturally wants to fall away. But if you really crank it down, the gripping strength is sufficient. That's as far as I got with version 1, and that's because I changed my mind on part of the design. You can see these arcs on the outside, and at that stage, I expected the bolts coming out of the foot to have a fixed width, and therefore these arcs were required to get sufficient clearance through the range of motion. And that brings me onto version 2. As you can see, it has fixed holes going around the clamp, and that's because the foot also swivels in the middle, meaning the two can pivot in the same way and keep everything aligned. The other idea here is that one of the bolts won't have a spring on it, instead it will have a nut, and we can rotate the nut to act as a stop, pressing on this part of the frame. 
I did manufacture this one, but it had major binding issues. One problem was, it was really hard to get the long screws square compared to the foot, so I loosened and adjusted these, as well as expanding the balls on the other side. This improved things quite a bit, but it still wasn't anywhere near smooth enough for my taste. And I confirmed this by installing it onto the drill and having a test run. As you can see, as downward pressure is applied, the drill can wobble from side to side, and that means we're not necessarily cutting straight. My two test countersunk holes were pretty much the same depth, but it still didn't inspire confidence. As you'll see, version 3 was successful, so I'll cover the build in detail so you can follow along at home. The big change for version 3 is the use of linear rods and bearings, and these ones are left over from my old solder doodle 2. This pair is 350mm long, so I simply measured the middle, cut them in half, and cleaned up the ends. That gave me 4 rods at 175mm. They ended up being a fraction short, maybe 200mm would be best. I guess you could start with something longer, and chop it down more and more if you needed to. Also, I'm using shorter LM8 bearings, but the longer ones will fit too. These components are heavy. I haven't tried this, but I'm pretty sure you could substitute in 8mm carbon tube and some plastic bushings if you so desired. And here is the final version in all of its glory. It might look bigger here, but that's just because there's more modelled. The key pieces have actually shrunk a bit. The four rods and bearings actually do a really good job of keeping everything aligned and straight, even though mine don't move quite as smoothly as they could because they're quite old. And because of this, the depth stop can be simplified. All we need is something to clamp on one of the rods, and that will do the job nicely. My first idea was this compliant peg mechanism, assisted with rubber bands, but it just didn't have the gripping power. So I ended up with this two-piece cam locking system. I made sure you could operate it with just one hand, and it has proved to be surprisingly strong. Let's talk about print settings, and all of the parts are already correctly oriented, and we need them to be crazy strong. I used 5 wall loops and 80% sparse infill, and because of the cantilever geometry, I couldn't find a way to print this without needing support, and I used automatic tree support with great success. By having 5 perimeters, we end up with continuous extrusion in all of the places that matter. The jaws will be printed in TPU, and we want pretty similar settings there, we don't want them to contort, we're just looking for a bit of give on the surface to help grab the clutch. Everything else I printed in PETG, which I find perfect for these stressed applications where things are being clamped. Job 1 after printing is removing support, and there shouldn't be anything here that's too hard to access. Our first job in assembly is installing M5 nuts. Lock nuts for the foot and frame assemblies, and a regular M5 nut inside the nut trap. You'll find that these are quite tight and probably need to be hammered in, and that is by design. M5 bolts are then used on the frame and foot to tie the two halves together. We want these as tight as possible, but still able to swivel. Next, the nut and knob traps push into their recesses. It doesn't matter which side you put them, and you're going to install the longest M5 bolt with washer, and twist it until it starts to catch the thread of the nut trap. Next, we'll take our TPU jaws, and slide them onto the dovetails on the frame pieces. If you install them backwards, it will be easy to flip them around later. Now we take our 8mm rods, and press them into the bores in the foot assembly. I designed these to be another nice tight fit, and if it's a bit looser for you, back in the day we used to wrap a little bit of tape around the rod just to get the fit a bit tighter. The bearings are installed in the same way on the frame subassembly. Once again, it's a tight fit and you'll probably need to tap them in with a mallet. The two halves of the lock need to be assembled in the open position as you're seeing here, and an M3 bolt will cut its own thread the first time it's inserted to hold them in place. Now take the lock and slide it onto one of the rods of your choice. Now we align and add the two main components together. Once you've done so, check everything is moving without binding. With the rounder side facing in, the rod holders then slide onto the end of the exposed rods. These are another press fit and hopefully they'll be nice and tight. Our final step is to insert some more M3 bolts, and again they will cut their own thread the first time you do so. As you're screwing them in, loop them around either a tension spring or a rubber band, with the exact length of that varying depending on how long your rods are. I use these cheap springs here, and I'd probably switch to rubber bands because these stretch soon after. If everything moves without binding, your assembly is complete. Installation onto the drill should be quite straightforward. And remember, you'll need to put quite a lot of torque into the tensioning screw, and as you do so, keep checking to make sure the device is on straight. Even with this installed, you should hopefully still have enough room to access the chuck to change between drill bits. Let's create two identical holes as a demonstration, and similar to a trimmer router, we can hold the base to make sure it's sitting flat. 
And as we drill, we know the drill is held completely square to the workpiece thanks to the rod and bearing design. The main feature I really wanted here is the depth stop, so here's how to use it. Typically, like a drill press, you would do your first bit of countersinking without any depth stop engaged. And when you're done, with the drill turned off, you can lower down the countersink bit until it touches and lock the clamp in place. That means that any follow-up holes should go to the same depth. So let's do a test and see how well it worked. We vacuum up the debris, and we can see our two holes are as close to identical as you can get. Of course, the beauty of this compared to a drill press is it's completely portable. You can use it upside down, sideways, wherever you need to. I'm really pleased with how this turned out, and I do have some of those carbon fiber tubes on the way to make it lighter. If you want to make your own, everything you need is posted on printables. Hardware, parts, settings, and even step-by-step -step instructions. And remember, this is open source, so please get remixing. Let me know in the comment section down below if this is something you're going to try. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing your own designs. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.